Hey, what's going on, everybody? Steve here, Rake and Profit, coming back to you with another video. And today we are talking with Jonathan David, who is actually uh, a student of the Wholesale Formula. He actually built a wholesale business, been doing it for quite a few years, has sold over eight figures. And in his first year, he ended up selling a million dollars wholesale in his business. So Jonathan is here. He's going to talk about his story, give you guys a bunch of tips and tricks, uh, discussing how he actually transitioned from hustling and flipping items to now doing wholesale, has a lot of big goals and everything, and just a great guy. So I want to introduce Jonathan. How are you doing? Good, good, Steve. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely appreciate you being here, man. And very curious about your story because we were talking off the air for a couple of minutes about you know, my audience and my journey. And you know, I do a lot of thrifting, eBay, Amazon and stuff. And you really related to that. And you were smiling a couple of times because you were like, I remember I was there and I felt the same uh, pain points that we feel at times, always having to go out and find new items and bring it back and work in 50, 60 hours a week. And our income's just kind of stuck. We want to grow, we want to build, but we're just having a hard time. So do you mind sharing a little bit about your story? Yeah. So, um, well, uh, I guess I'll say um, my story started, well, I started selling on Amazon in 2012, um, selling textbooks. Uh, that's when, you know, um, right now it's kind of tough to sell textbooks, but that's how I got started. But like um, before that, I was, uh, and, and during that time, I was a sales rep at T-Mobile. So mm -hmm. a lot of people don't really talk much about what they did before the online game. But um, I've been doing a lot of reflecting recently and I realized that it, played a big part uh, in everything. So like uh, I was in a commission, what that is, you know, sales rep is just a commission based job. So you, you live off, you live off the hustle, you kill, you know, you eat what you kill. And, and that's, that's basically it. Like I was bred that way. And uh, that's kind of why I fell in love with Amazon because it was just like commissions and then, you know, our payout and our, our profits. And when you, when you hustle and you sell stuff, you know, it's profits, it's commission, but as soon as the month is over or the payout's over, like if you stop, you don't eat. Like that's just how it works. So, um, but anyway, so I got in. I got into textbooks when um, I, I realized that you know. Actually, before that, also I studied finance, so I was always doing. Uh, I was trying to outsmart you know the stock market. I was always always one wanted to know like how can I just put in, you know, a little bit of money or some money and just <laughs> not have to work again. Like that was when I was 17, 16, 18, like that, that is what I thought my life would be like, I'll get some money somehow. Like I'll work at McDonald's, I'll get some money. Cause I knew I wasn't a good student. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't somebody that would just be in a suit and tie and like, you know, be a lawyer. I just knew I couldn't be that person. So I was like, look, how do I just get $10,000 and then every year save $10,000? I live at home. I live at home with my base, in, you know, in the basement for like 10 years at my parents' house. I'll save $10,000 a year working at McDonald's and I'll, but I'll put it into stocks and I'll invest in stocks and I'll become rich. So basically <laughs> I did, I did that. And uh, I studied finance went to school for finance. I did a lot of research on stocks and then I realized that, Hey, like it's not possible to, uh, it's not possible. You know, I put, put the money in, I, I had actually a lot of early success, but that early success got me cocky. And then I put more money in mm. and then I ended up losing everything. And I'm like, I lost so much money. I was, I was at the point where I was like, man, I'm never going to do this again. Like I have to figure out how to really like follow what my parents said, go to school, work hard, get a good job, uh, make 40, $50,000 a year, work your way up. And you know, that's what you're going to mm. do. So I was like, all right, well, that makes sense because I tried my way. And I'm like, I, you know, the laziness, the lazy mentality I had, we just get rich quick, that didn't work out. So, so basically, um, I told myself, man, like, I lost so much money though. I was like, if I ever, like, the only time I'll ever invest in the stock market again is if I could predict what it's going to do. Like, the moment I could predict what it's going <laughs> to do is the moment I will start investing because, but I knew I could never predict. Like, I knew that that didn't exist. So it was really a way of me telling myself, never gamble never do something that was gambling so i'm pretty much i would classify myself as a gambling addict but that's for another story um but but really so i ended up when i was in college i just had my textbooks laying around and i i, I decided to just look up one of the textbooks on amazon and i saw it was selling for um well, like ten dollars let's say and i bought the book for 50. i was like cool and i didn't end up selling it and then since my dad paid for my books he was like 
you know, I was not even doing good in school. He was like, hey, why don't you go sell the books again? Why don't you sell the books? Why didn't you well, like, give me some money back? Like, 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 just give me some money back for the books right. I bought, like, <laughs> at least because you're not doing good in school. I was like, oh, shoot, all right. So I go look it up and um, I look it up online and I'm like, the book is $58. I'm like, how is the book $58 if I bought it for $50? And last month or two months ago, it was ten dollars. Like that doesn't make sense. And I started thinking about it, thinking about it, and I looked it up. And then I, I, I it hit me that all the stuff I was learning in school hit me that you know supply and demand and all these things. And I'm like, wow. okay, so you're telling me that what causes the price? Oh wait, maybe more kids want the books now, and they don't want them when I was trying to sell them, like because when the semester starts. Right. Duh. And then I re and then I was like. <laughs> If that's true, that's crazy. And then I started stumbling on uh, Camel, Camel, Camel uh, is, a, is a software like Keepa yep. nowadays. It's back in the day. And I looked at it and I saw the graphs. And when I saw <laughs> the graphs, that the price of a, a, a old edition textbook was, you know, $10 or $8 um, last year or, or six months ago. And then every, every semester it goes up $60. I'm like, that's insane. So you're telling me I could predict the future. Like you're telling me I could do yeah, that. Yeah. So the moment that happened, I completely took all my saving at the time. <laughs> I had, you know, ten thousand dollars saved up from you know trying to work, you know, work hard, um, doing what I was doing. Um, and I just started buying everybody's books. I went to all my friends and families' house and empty their their bookshelf. I bought all my kids, all kids and uh, friends in school, all the classes books. Try to resell them, and, and that's kind of how I got into Amazon. Um, and then after that, I was like, "Man, like I'm gonna have to stay in college forever because I'm not gonna know when I'm gonna run out of books. Like I need to stay in college <laughs> to buy books. Like that that was the joke that I made to myself and my friends. But then, so then I, I was like, okay, like what? Like I'm not gonna always have some books. Like where do I do? What do I do now? And then I I saw um, Rob Anderson. I don't know if anybody knows Rob Anderson. He Dollar was moves. That man, was one of Rob Anderson. Rob he's Anderson. A, he's the man. Rob Anderson, uh, I'm giving you a shout out, but he's the OG. Like I, when I saw, he, I, I, at the time, I kind of didn't even want to even look on Amazon, uh, look online to see if there was any guides because I was too scared to see that other people were like doing what I was doing. I wanted to keep it a secret, and then but I, I peeked online and I saw Dollar Moves it was over, just started. It was I think recently starting up, and he was talking about Q4 is crazy. And I'm like, what does Q4 being crazy have to do with anything? Like I'm selling textbooks, but then he talked. But I was like, wait, so you, maybe toys has the same effect. Mm -hmm. So then I found myself in Toys R Us all the time, um, and uh, and 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 just getting you know toys. And I saw that they're old toys that sell for a lot. So I was. I was absolutely killed. like there. There was like uh, back in the day in Toys R Us when no one knew about retail arbitrage. Like there was like dusty Legos on top of the overstock uh, on top of the shelves all the time that nobody knew about. I was getting ladder. I was getting ladders and climbing on the ladders like an employee, like getting all this stuff. And they've been up there for six or seven years. So there's so oh. much there's so much dust on them. And then when you scan them, since they've been around for so long, they're two dollars because that's their markdown price. But they sell for four hundred dollars and three hundred dollars. Oh so I was like, it was like finding gold. But <laughs> but 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 I. So I was on the emotional high from that. I was like, wow, this is the best. So all I did was do. Was, I should have gone harder. Like I was in school, but I did it one day a week, and I was, you know, my first year doing that, I did about six hundred thousand. You know, just a, all I did, all my retail arbitrage business was from one store. Uh, Toys R Us. I didn't diversify in stores. Like That's I mem crazy. I memorized the aisles, the markdown schedules, the employees, the the, the 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 computer system. Like I didn't go to Target. I didn't go to Walmart. I didn't have many of them either. But I just focused on Toys R Us and just completely, you know, did arbitrage like crazy. And looking back, I wish I just had dropped out of school and did everything because all I did, I spent I spent one day sourcing, but I would come home with a complete van full of toys that it would take me the whole rest of the week to prep. And ship it out and get it ready and get it get it sold. So Crazy. so so that's what I used to do. But that was fun. That was exciting when it happened. And I did that for you know about two years um, doing retail arbitrage. And then I was like, man, I got to make things easier because remember, I'm a lazy guy at heart. So I'm like, hey, like I gotta like get this a little easier. And then OA started to be a thing. I'm like, I didn't think that would be possible. I don't think it'd be possible that you could just order something from the internet. And then sell it on the internet. It like, doesn't make sense. Um, but then it made sense, and then I did it. And then then prep centers came out at the same time, so I was able to just do a lot of, um, you know, work like that with arbitrage. And um, um, so 
so basically that that was that was kind of like uh, you know arbitrage for me but then that was after doing that for a while there was just so many stores just saying hey we can't we can't sell to you you're a reseller you bought too much quantity flags i'm like okay everybody's doing this now like that is why it's happening like i, I know i'm not the only one like I, maybe maybe i'm the one that broke right, them, right. broke them maybe but but um you know there there there's things we did with you know to try to like have multiple browsers and all that stuff back in the day but like in different ips and emails and whatever long story we did a lot to try, <laughs> to, get, to try to get our orders in um but i just realized i'm like man like i i i'm 20 what 23 years old like i like like I, I'm not like I'm not going to be doing this for the next 20 years. So like, what what can I do? Like I need to stop. Like this is not going to keep happening. Like right. a lot a lot of people who are doing arbitrage right now. Like I feel bad um, that they're making this decision to completely like completely just say no. Arbitrage is all I'm going to do because what it is is a great hustle. It's an amazing hustle. But if you view it as this is going to be my career forever like that could be difficult because it's just it's just it's just view it as a hustle and i, I saw you steve even had a video about you're buying a house like take all that hustle money and put it somewhere like that like it's just like it's it's like being in the nba or nfl you know nfl stands for not uh you know nfl athletes nba athletes they get a bunch of money all at once and it's no different from that probably to mm. a smaller scale because it's like you really don't sad to say and i'm talking to myself too like 23 year old jonathan like 22 year old you didn't have the skills to really earn that amount of money that you were earning like the amount of money you were earning you know 500 dollars an hour doing arbitrage a thousand dollars an hour like you 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 think you're the man right but you're you're not because you don't have professional skills to actually take that money and do something with it so mm. you should you should just always be like hey um this is not going to happen for the next 20 years this might happen for the next five years so for five years, I'm going to make as much money as I can and take that money, invest it somewhere else that has nothing to do with Amazon, nothing to do with eBay. And that way, like when, th when things do change, whether they disappear or change to a level where it's a lot harder, you're not wondering where, you, where your next meal is going to come from. That's all. And things are always. changing like crazy right now, man. Like, sorry to interrupt you, but the retail yeah. arbitrage game is like yeah. completely changing with, with all these restrictions and everything with Amazon, like dramatically over the last year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like, I kind of, um, you see, I, I never got into the, the restrictions game where I was getting in trouble from restrictions. If anything, like I knew from, I felt early on that the writing was on the wall um, in about 2015 is when I pivoted into wholesale, when it was like, hey, like you go to a store and they say, no, you can't buy five, you can't buy 50, you can only buy three. Right. I'm like, that makes no sense. It does make sense from their standpoint, but from my standpoint, I understand why they don't want us to buy all their lost leaders. That, that makes perfect sense. I agree with them. But from my standpoint, at the time, I was like, this makes no sense. Like, is this my bit? Like, my business is to do this, and you're telling me no, and I can get emotional about it. But then instead, I started to think back to what I was actually learning in college. I talk a lot of smack about college um, on the offline, by the way, but then <laughs> some of the college knowledge starts to come back, and I started to think yeah. about it, and I'm like, okay. I studied finance and in finance there was actually the term arbitrage was used and all arbitrage really means is in the real in in not in the real world but the offline world the world that existed thousands of years or before the online world yeah. um the word arbitrage just means riskless profit because of inefficiencies in the marketplace mm. so when you make a riskless profit because the market is inefficient like a market being inefficient means that the price is not correct that's what when you hear that term inefficient market so in okay. stock in the stock market there's a thing called efficient market hypothesis and inefficient i don't want to get too technical because a lot of people fell asleep during this lesson um, <laughs> but but I, I was pretty um in tune to it because i lost a lot of money doing this before right and I always wondered why I lost money because I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. But then I, when you realize that the markets, whether it's the financial markets, the stock markets, can be inefficient, that means that it's priced incorrectly or efficient and it's priced correctly. But how, mm -hmm. could, how could it be priced incorrectly? And, and really when I found out, my professor was saying, well, the price of a stock can be too high when people just think it's worth more than it is, you know, a.k.a. Bitcoin last year. Um, or inefficient is when it's worth uh, less, uh, it's worth more than people think it is. So mm. it's like you could have a really good company. Like in 2008, 
2007, there was a good company, like call it Google. Google is a great company. They make so much money. Like just because one year passes or one day passes and it crashes and it's worth, it's now worth, worth half of what it was. That doesn't mean it's worth half what it was. Like that company is making billions of dollars the day before it crashed and the same amount of money, like almost the same the day after. So it's like this idea that it's worth less is 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 they come up with the word, the 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 the, the name inefficient. That that would mean it's inefficient. So then um the reason why I bring all that up is because arbitrage is a riskless profit between that. And when I started to think about that. I asked my, I remember that hit me in school because I was always thinking about how do I make money without losing anything? And it was riskless, sound great to me. And I said, hey, professor, why is it that, um, like why, so you can just keep doing this and make billions and billions of dollars and just keep doing, you know, arbitrage in the financial markets? Cause there's such a thing called arbitrage in the financial markets. Forgot to, forgot to explain that, but there is a yep. thing called arbitrage financial market. You can, you can make a riskless profit by buying something in like one currency and selling it in another currency at the right time and you make like 20 cents. But if you do it on a billions and trillions of dollars, you make a lot of money and you do it over and over again. So I was like, so you can just keep doing this a million, billion, millions of times and just make billions of dollars. And my professor said, um, you can do it, but only for a limited amount of time because the, the, the big players are called arbitrageurs and eventually they bring everything down to equilibrium and the markets mm. become efficient. So efficient market mean inefficient is too, too low. Efficient is too, uh, I mean, you know, inef efficient market means the price is right. So correct. Like yeah. just, like, just like if you buy something from the store for $20 and it sells online for $20, like, or $26, you know, adjusted for fees, like that would mean it's efficient. You wouldn't buy Got that it. thing to sell it because it's priced exactly. So it's mm -hmm. like event by, by definition, arbitrage will always bring back, come to an equilibrium, always. That's just the definition of what's happened before in other markets. So it's th this market, it's the same concept, but people you don't can see that. it too. It yeah. used to be so wide in 2012, yep. 13. It's slow. It's getting like, if you look the prices, it's like everything's coming to an equilibrium. You can just, yep. yeah, exactly. It's because crazy. You explained it that way, man. It's like you're blowing my mind. <laughs> Yeah, well, that well, this is all that worthless college stuff that I thought was worthless, but it actually <laughs> makes sense later on, right? Um, but 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 it's true because whatever happens, you know, we think we're all online, we're all spend a lot of time online. I do it myself, and we kind of get caught up in a bubble. But there's a whole world out there where things already happen, and if you look for parallels from the, the history and and other industries, you'll see it, it plays out, and it, you can make better decisions when you kind of put yourself out, out a little bit and see that. But but yeah, there's so many big players in the arbitrage space, like doing 100 million, you know, 50 million, just doing arbitrage, 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 that it makes it really hard for everyone else to, to do things. But you can still make money here and there, but it's harder. So so that that's kind of I wasn't squeak. I could I, I had them. I knew that it would get really hard. And for me. I have a low tolerance for pain. Like I don't want things to get hard. <laughs> I, I, things, I felt like things were already hard enough when I lost a lot of money early on when I was 18. I was just, a young, you know, poor little kid. So I was like, I, I don't want it to get hard. So I kind of was like, okay, in like three years is going to get really hard. And this was about 2015. That's when I was like, okay, how do I just replenish inventory over and over again and like not go to stores? Because that's all I did. I used to go to stores, all the after stores, stores. So, you know, then I realized that um, I, I like, okay, well, can I just buy something in bulk from somewhere? So I looked into liquidations and pallets and I was like a lot, that looks sketchy to me because then you had to buy a whole bunch of pallets. Not sketchy, but kind of like arbitrage because it's a bunch of pallets. And then you had to like check everyone and half of it would be bad and the other half would be okay. In it. Yeah, so I was like, you know, that to me is also a guess. I, I don't want to guess. I just want the most boring guaranteed way to make money. Like what's the most boring, Like, because I had enough, I had enough failures. You, you wanted know? the predictability. You wanted yeah. that reoccurring cash flow. You wanted to know that the money was going to keep coming. You didn't want ups and downs, kind of like the arbitrage. Yeah, yeah, and also because the predictability means you can plan your plan things you can plan your rent you could plan your life you could do so much you can hire once you have predictability if you don't have pre predictability then it's hard and also i wanted to be able to work to have things going without me working i've been working so hard and coming from the sales background commission background well, like the moment you stop you're done you know so i was like i i i, I wanted to just 
do something once and then it just continue going forever. Like, got it. That, that's just my lazy, the lazy mentality that I have. So <laughs> I started, I started looking into wholesale in 2015. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to sign up. I'm going to just Google wholesale, Google wholesale. And there was like, I signed up for a bunch of directories. I don't know if you know, sale who and worldwide brands, mm -hmm. but those, I thought the moment I signed up for that, I was like, Oh, wholesale directories. You just have to, pay us $69 for a year. We can go in, you can see a list of suppliers and then just make, you know, plug and play and you make a bunch of money. And I watched the video that their sales video. And I was like, this is amazing. And I told my wife right after that, I'm like, Hey, I'm not going to the stores anymore. We're going to make $10,000 a month from this profit easily. Like I told her it's going to be an easy, easy it's going thing. down. I got a plan. And, and the plan was, I would, I just have to talk. I knew I had to talk to, you know, go through like, uh, I have to have like a thousand SKUs. If I had a thousand SKUs that sold one thing, you know, I make $5 on that one thing. Yep. Like that would, that would make it. So I was like, let's do it. So I started looking in and I'm like, man, going through all the price lists, and I'm like, nothing's profitable, nothing. For, like, I don't know, like, this is not going to make any money. Like, this is horrible. And I was like, man, I got to be a better way. So then I realized, like, why don't I just call the brand directly? Like, there'll be more margin. And I'll just call the brand and do it. So I started to make a big list of brands. And the moment I was doing that, I saw I saw Wholesale Formula popped up. And I'm like, what's this? And like, and then some guys started talking, Dan, Eric, and started talking. And I'm like, okay, like, you're talking about what I'm right about to do. So I'm like, <laughs> I can either... I was like a little bit at the time I was like, well, like I'm about to do this. Like I kind of was like a little prideful into the sense where I was like, I'm going to, I don't really need their help. Like right, I don't right. need their help. I could do it. And like, you know, but like, let me just see what it's about. And, you know, I kind of, I kind of like don't want the competition, like, you know, but I was like, all right, whatever, let me just take the plunge at the time at the, at the time it was like, you know, 800, 900 or something for the course. That's when it was beta launch. So these are just some unknown guys. No one, I'd never heard of them before. I'd never seen them in a Facebook group. And it was the most expensive decision I ever made. All my, <laughs> all my courses have been like $25 courses up to this point. And I'm like, what? Cause, cause that was all that was out there. And then, and then, and then I took the course I, I, I got, I took the course, but really, I mean, I bought the course, but really I, I took like just about two modules of the course because I didn't really need to know like how to do this and that. Like I already had the concept in my brain. Mm -hmm. The one thing I was missing was just like, you know, the community. The moment I got in there, it was a community of about 150 people who were doing the same thing as me and da and Dan and Dil uh, Dylan and Eric. They were just, they were just any stupid question I had, like a dumb question, like what is like, what is a PO, you know, like, they're asking me for a PO. What do I do? Like things like that. <laughs> like you, like, like you could Google my name, like not Google, but search my name in the group eventually, you know, whoever is in the group and just see like the dumb questions I used to ask. And they would just answer me in like these, these answers that were take like, like blog post answers because they, they just really want to help. And they still do that after four years, <laughs> they still do that. And that's because they really care. And, but, but literally just that, if all I did was answer one one of my questions, it was worth the money because people don't realize that people don't realize that it's the it's 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 like it's not hard. Like wholesale is not hard. It, it's just required. You call people, you call brands, and then you buy their stuff and you sell it on Amazon. Like that's really what it is. The hard part is the getting the confidence to do it. And like when you when you're in a situation and knowing that you have somebody else that can help you in your corner, like you don't have to know all the answers. You just need to act like you know half the answers. Be confident, and then you can still get help from people in your network. And it was I was adding them to my network. And 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 at the time I didn't know that was what I was doing. I thought I was buying a course, but it, I, I literally looked at two modules, like one on something and one on how to make the website. And that's all. But I know a lot of people do watch the courses and they, the courses are, are updated all the time and they're great. But, um, but, but yeah, like I really, I really, that in 2016 was when I took that course um, and I really dove in. And that same year I moved, um, I was living in New York at the time and I knew it was going to be really successful. So I moved from New York to Florida because like, you know, taxation and all that. But um, I, I told myself, you know, this was the first time I was moving away from my home. My family, and my wife moved and I was, I told myself I could, I'm not going to have it. I don't have any income. So I could do RA and OA on the side and do wholesale. Um, also, but then I, I knew, I knew my own capacity. Like I knew 
that, yeah, that sounds good in theory. Like, yeah, why stop something that's working? And I'm not telling anyone to do this, right, right. But, but I knew like, okay, arbitrage is not going to be around. So why do it? Just completely give it up. And just like, if it takes, if it takes me two years to figure out wholesale by splitting my focus, like I rather just not split my focus and it take me six months. Like, I don't care what it takes. Like I'll not make money for six months. So during those six months, my wife was like saying, you need to do away. Like, <laughs> like, because, because I had so many good sources. Like I gave my sources away to like, um, you know, friends and family and they were able to make like thousands and thousands just by doing nothing because I just giving them the sources. And um, so, I mean, if, at that time, 2016, if you guys had messaged me if you want sources, like I probably would have given you. So, but bolos. But, yeah, I had so many bolos back then. But, <laughs> but, but anyway. So, um, yeah, like I, I literally quit cold turkey and then I went all into, into it. But it, it's still with their help. Even with their help, like it really took me like six or seven months to really, oh, yeah. like get say you know get a hang of it. But then month seven to nine is when I went from like 20k a month. Well, first it was zero, and then from zero to 20K after like seven months, which was hard, but then everything started to click. Like I perfected my pitch. I knew what to say. I had the confidence, like that was the built up. Um, and I, I was really believing what was gonna happen. And then from from month seven to month nine is when I was doing 80,000, 90,000 a month. So wow. it, it just completely just went from like, literally like I could have quit, like this is horrible, like it's not worth it, to like just, going straight to you know a seven figure run rate um pretty quickly so so that that's kind of that's kind of like and after after i did that i was like wow this this is real i need to stop um actually i need to stop actually just doing wholesale in the way i'm doing wholesale because i knew that just doing wholesale is is also a form of arbitrage because it's like you contact a brand you buy their stuff and then sell it like it's an easier arbitrage and i call it um in my, in my group wholesale arbitrage and a lot of people talk about that right now and they talk about it like you know quit your job do wholesale arbitrage i mean i wouldn't quit my job and do wholesale arbitrage i would just you know keep your job and do wholesale arbitrage unless you're doing it really big but just know that it's not permanent and i, I and i started to think like what's permanent and and I'm not, nothing's permanent but like i think one of the most permanent things even more permanent than private label, which everyone seems to call the holy grail, is that you know when you build real relationships with people and you're not hiding behind a computer all the time, and you mm. build a relationship with the supplier and you know they're a human being and you can you know shake their hands and look them in the eye and talk to them, you know that's a relationship. You know, so people complain about race to the bottom. Um, well, if you're doing arbitrage, by definition, it's gonna race to the bottom because the market's called to equilibrium. And it, it is by definition. So I, I always, you know, chuckle when I see people not know that race to the bottom is the name of the game of arbitrage. And and but when you when you have a relationship, there is no race to the bottom, uh, you know, there, because all you have to do and, and there's no such thing as bad margins because you just tell your host wholesale supplier, hey, I have no margin. Can you can can we have a map pricing? Can we start a map pricing that gives us more margin? Um, can we um can you give me a better price or something can you pay us a little bit for advertising like those doors open up when you have a relationship like so many people do wholesale and they're like yeah i'm scanning price lists i'm not finding anything and i'm like even during you know they're doing the wholesale form so i'm like um well yeah wholesale pharma has been around for four years like the days of scanning price lists are are not are over um you know i used to scan price lists and and and, and that was kind of hard but it, it not, I wouldn't say it's over because it's still very, you could still do it, but just it's know not as easy kind of like retail arbitrage. Right. But, but again, keeping your, keep, keeping your head, if you're doing it, you can do it, but just know that it, what do you think is going to happen in three years? Like in three years, like it's probably not good. Like you and 500 other people are going to be doing it. So it's something is going to happen, right? The brand is going to have an exclusive seller. So it's like, okay, well, that's the case. Like do you have to figure out a way to work closer with the brand? So that's why all, we, when, when I started our first year, I had about 40 or 50 brands that I was ordering from. And then I basically just consolidated all like, look, um, we need to do exclusives with you guys. And it's hard to do exclusive. A lot of people say they try and it is really hard. It's like getting married. Like it's, you can't just, you know, you can't just 
you can't just expect that to happen. Like you have to have shown some value. You have to demonstrate that you are not like everybody else. Like if you're asking to get married to this brand and this brand has seven other suitors, yeah, if the brand has no one else, like they'll take you, but they're probably a horrible brand. Like, but if a brand has seven or eight other sellers, like why would they take you? Like you have to really separate yourself um, and not just, you can't just place one order and ask for exclusive. Like that, that, like we were doing that for over a year, mm -hmm. a year of track record. And then we started out of our 36 brands, we, we whittled it down and we got eight exclusives. We dropped all of our other brands and our you know revenue grew, even though we dropped SKUs. And it, it's hard to do that because it's like I'm losing money. And you know, coming from the hustle mindset, it's like, well, that's money though. Like, why drop it? And it's because it's like those guys don't want exclusive they're, they're and typically brands that are, are are i noticed that are ran by second generation owners um they're 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 worried a lot about preserving what their parents built they're not trying to like kick off all their dealers and start something fresh it's mm -hmm. you have to you have to know going into it that you can't treat them differently than you treat a brand that is uh the a founder founders are, are ready to go they're energetic but second generation, they're different. So it's like, there's so many little things that you have to know. Like it's really psychology and a mind game when you're talking to people, when you're building relationships. Relationship is empathy, learning what the other person wants, but like nobody does that because when you come from the world of hustle, it's like you're not, there's nothing you've done so far in the hustle world to really learn like how to build a relationship. Like when you flip on eBay, like there's no relationship. You can just hide behind your computer and do it. Like I did it and I, I thought, I, th I wanted to make, I wanted to be a billionaire doing that, but I realized like it's not possible, <laughs> you know, like you can't always hide. So like, when do you make the switch before, you know, things, you know, don't work out. So, so, so literally all we do going forward is we just try to build relationships with brands. That's our mm -hmm. approach. That's what we take relationship, relationship, exclusive and semi-exclusive. And that's about it. So um, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of like, uh, you know, how we started and, and where we're at right now. Like we don't view things as an arbitrage play ever because that's short term and not really, you know, something I can bank on. That's awesome, man. Really appreciate the story. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, so far, definitely be sure to uh, smash that like button and also leave a comment, super inspiring story. And I know a lot of you guys can relate to this. I'm certainly relating a lot to it. And it's just been really cool to kind of just hear like, man like that that part where you said you would just be reaching like climbing ladders and like pulling legos off the yeah. top like that was even before my time man i wasn't even doing it then like it just super crazy man so um a couple more questions uh because i know we're getting to that time um what are the biggest challenges people need to be on the lookout for um when they make that transition over and they're getting started with wholesale that first I guess that first 90 to 180 days what are a couple big things or mistakes that you made that um, maybe you can help the audience with. Yeah. Um, well, uh, there's, uh, well, one thing I have to say, the biggest thing, um, well, well, I have a, I have a Facebook group where I teach a bunch of people um, uh, how to go from, you know, transition from, you know, doing arbitrage to um, wholesale. And I have a, a blueprint free, free blueprint. Um, probably Steve will put it in the description or something where it's, it's called the arbitrage sure. transition blueprint it pretty much just talks about how to do the transition, but really, um, you know, what's, what I know that will cripple a lot of people making that transition is, you know, not knowing, uh, how much money they need to invest up front. Like, yes, sure. Any business you can start with no money. Like if anybody asks me, like, can you start a business with no money or how, how, how little can you get started? Like, that's really not the question. Like if you're asking how little does it take to get started with something, you're probably not ready. Um, with arbitrage, yeah, sure, you could start something little, but like if you're trying to start an actual business based on relationships, like you should, the answer should be like when the when someone wait, you know, when you ask how little um, does it take to get started, I'm gonna say it takes everything. It takes your whole life. Like you should be willing to dedicate everything to it, or else don't do it. Like I'm not sure why you'd want to do it. And if you're doing eBay and arbitrage and Amazon for a while, like you'd make that jump because you know how hard it is. Like people say the pain of, you know, people only change when the pain of change is uh, easier than the pain of saying the same. So some of you will be like, how, how little can I do to get started? And for you guys, I'd say, don't get started. Like just do what you're doing. You, you're probably liking what you're doing and just keep doing it. I mean, it's fun. Like I go into stores still 
and like I just get so much PTSD and flashbacks. Like I just just want <laughs> I just want to climb on. The, I just want to scan this. Like I want to like this is on sale. Like but I have to stop myself. And then mm -hmm. I'm like because even though it's been so long because it's so fun. Like it's fun. So if you're having fun, like do it. Just take that one advice I gave earlier about like don't don't spend your money on like pretend that you're poor. Like take all your money and invest it. Like even if you invest it in like treasury notes or CDs, like that's better than spending it because uh, too many people think that they're business owners when if you have a transactional business, your, your job is very similar to an, uh, an athlete or a commission based person. Like it's temporary. Just, just, just treat it that way. And, and, and um, you know, put the money aside, but, but to, so really to get started capital wise, I would say, um, I would say like you, you should, if you're doing retail arbitrage and all that stuff, like you should have um, $10,000 saved up. Like if you don't have 10, you know, in my group, I'd say four to 6,000, but like at this point, like I'm going to increase that and say like, you should have $10,000 saved up because you're going to make some bad choices early on. Like, in terms of buying, you're going to buy the wrong inventory. And that's the only way you're going to know what to buy the right inventory or, you know, you're going to make some mistakes. So you're, we want to spread it off a couple brands. So it's like, you have to, you have to give yourself that, you have to give yourself that, that, that margin for error, because again, wholesale is not hard. You're calling a brand, or you're talking to a brand and you're trying to get, you're trying to sell their stuff. Like that's not hard. What's hard is when you run into an obstacle and, uh, when you run into an obstacle and then you just don't know how to react to that obstacle, you're like, Oh my gosh, I failed. I'm a failure. This doesn't work. Like, and then you say, you know what, I'm going to keep going. And then you fail again. And then you're like, I'm, this definitely doesn't work, but I'm going to try one more time because I saw a motivational video today. And then, <laughs> and then, and then you get hit again. But like, you're going to like, when I got started, like I, like every week I felt every day, I felt like I was getting punched into something. Wow. Like, like just because of, you know, bad buys, like there was one thing I bought, there was one thing, uh, I, 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 I found some suppliers. I was like, yes, this is great. I invested like $12,000 $12, in it, which was like 90%, 80% of my budget. I was like, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to be rich. And then, and, and then like a week later, all of it got tagged for hazmat and I had to like, oh. I was like, wow, the thing I put my hopes and dreams in, I was going to oh. like retire on this. I was like, it all went to hazmat. I mean, I'm proof for hazmat now, but at the time, this was years ago when hazmat was like, not even. That was a big thing. Yeah. yeah. It was not even, you couldn't even get hazmat. So I was like, man, that, that took a while to get that. It took me four months of every day calling, calling to have a good relationship with the brand. He approved me. We're on it. And then, so but but there there was just so many things that that happened like just cash flow issues and um, just so many things that you gotta you got like getting rejected getting hung up on getting like you know those type of things happen all the time and it's like you gotta you gotta have uh, you, you just have to have the fortitude to go through it so that's why the ten thousand dollars will protect you give you a buffer for a lot of those those things it could be rejection it could be bad inventory bad inventory hurts the most they say psychologically that losing money um mm -hmm. the chemical the chemical in your brain that gets released when you lose money is similar to the same chemical when someone dies so uh, so um people don't realize that 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 the effect that it has on them they might like you might talk about a casual like, yeah i made bad i made a bad uh, inventory buy whatever but like it's no secret why that can cripple someone's business. Like it's no secret. Like if someone dies and your business goes under, like I would, no one would blame you. So it's like, it's, it's the same thing, but knowing up front that you know, that's what your brain is going to do. Like just, just manage your brain, like no upfront, it's going to happen. Have $10,000. Don't put it all in one place. Split that up over a couple of brands and like, um, you know, just don't go all in on, on something. On, uh, and if you're just starting, Definitely don't go all in because you're going to think the first good opportunity, you're going to want to go all in, but you're not, honestly, you're not that smart. I'm just saying that, I'm just telling that to you because that's wow. what I tell myself. Like mm. the chances are that you found something that is so great up front, like is very, it's not that probable and it might be, but like, don't go all in because you still don't know what you don't know. Now, if you have somebody who's over here and they're able to ask you like, Hey, can you, can you like check um, if this is a good thing or not, then that's good. That's different. Um, and, and chances are that person will still probably, probably tell you not to go all in because they know that you still shouldn't. 
Like there's there's I, I, there was a time I opened up a mastermind where I had about people uh, some people come into my a mastermind where I was doing you know things like that for people. I'm not doing it right, right. now. I'm not sure if I'm gonna open it up again or, or what I'm gonna do. But but they would just say, hey, like I just got started. Like you know, is this good? And I could tell you the first every person who said that to me, the first three to five of them have been horrible. I'm like, no, it's not good. It's not good. And those guys that they're watching, they know who they are. But now, <laughs> now, now they're they're doing good. They know what's good. They know what's bad, and and, and they're moving forward. Um, but but yeah, like you definitely want to have that amount to get started, and you wanna you wanna go all, you wanna go all in. And by all in, I don't. I'm not trying to say if you have no money in the bank or just ten thousand in your bank, the last ten thousand to your name, and you hate eBay right, and right. Amazon and arbitrage and thrifting so much. Like, I'm not going to be the one to tell you to just, you know, neglect your wife and kids and everything to go do that. Now, if you're single, sure. If you're not, then like you should, you should go all in mentally and, you know, be really good with structuring your day. You know, maybe, maybe spend four days a week doing wholesale and two days doing what you love doing. Um, spend the beginning of the week doing wholesale because it's harder. So at the beginning of the week, um, you don't want to, you, you want to use your strong mental energy um, on wholesale because it's new and you could do retail arbitrage and all that stuff uh, like uh, you know in your sleep so you save it for the end of the week probably saturday or sunday because it's like you don't need any, any mental energy for that or, or friday or saturday um right. because if you have to go in between wholesale retail or you do both at the same time there's a thing called context switching where you know people don't are not aware of it i wasn't aware of it earlier um where when you switch from one task to the next like people don't realize that there's a, a, a lag of time between one task and the next that just the, you, the, the level of focus um, just disappears. So you, 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 the more context switching you're doing in the day, you're just wasting time and focus. And you're, people who context switch all the time, uh, there was a graph or some survey I saw done. It's about 70% of your time is wasted context switching. So if all you huh. did, if so, like if you have 160 hours in a week, you sleep for you know 40 hours, you have 120 waking hours, and you're going back and forth between tasks, like you're wasting a hundred of those hours, you're wasting 90 of those hours. Like people think, oh, I work nine uh, 90 hours a week, I work 100 hours a week, I'm productive, hashtag Gary V, you know, like they think they're doing that because but they're not because they're context switching a lot, like going back and forth. Like just if you could just do one, a lot of times people do that. And this is getting real psychological because, and these are all things I figure out about myself is because the moment you're doing something and something gets hard, like your brain naturally wants to stop. Like it either wants mm. to go to an easy task yep. or, or you want to read a blog because you think that's learning, but like you're, what you're doing, what, what was hard, that moment it got hard is when you start to need to start mm. thinking about it a little bit more. And, and that is the hard part, but people's brains automatically want to like suppress and do something a little easier. So they they caught they context switch and then and then and then and then they get distracted. But distraction is not even what I'm talking about. It's just a switch. They switch to maybe okay, let me check my sales and then maybe look to add a new SKU or try to like source somewhere because mm -hmm. it's what they know. But then when they come back, they lost not only the, the time doing another task, but the focus was you know 70% of their time they just lost switching. So it's like if all you do is block off Monday to Thursday, which is the beat or Monday to Wednesday through Wednesday to the beginning of the week, and that is when your brain is at the highest level, um, provided that you took a Sunday type of break um, or unplug time period on Sunday. You know, Monday through Thursday is like, or Wednesday is like when your brain is absolutely the most um, fun, uh, highest um, level, and that's what you should be doing. And also parts of your day, the first, you know, five, six hours of your day is when you definitely need to just do the hardest task, which is if you're coming to a new business, like you have to do that. You can't save that new business for the end of the day. Like you do um, um, save your business, uh, those tasks for um, like anything retail arbitrage based or anything that you know how to do. You save, it. you save it for after lunch. After lunch, you get drowsy, you focus on that. That's 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 how you <laughs> should work your day. So those little productivity stuff, I, I didn't, love it. I didn't know those things back in the day i was just white knuckling everything i'm like i don't have time for this i don't have time for feelings i don't have time for for psychology i don't have time for all this i'm just gonna work 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 and check my sales and all i did was check my sales honestly i don't think I did that much work. <laughs> but um but yeah so 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 that's 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 kind of the, the advice i don't know most people won't give that type of advice but that that advice i think is the most important thing to get started is like make sure you have a buffer and just make sure that you you know for the newbie you block off 
you block off those types of time, th those time blocks to to give yourself a chance. Otherwise, it's going to be hard for you. you, you you're going uphill. Jonathan David, man, dropping more knowledge bombs than I could have ever imagined. I love the ending right there, going over the psychology. And I think a big takeaway from this video is, listen, if you're going to start a new business, regardless if it's wholesale or it's a pizzeria or whatever you're going to start, it takes a lot of energy. It's like a rocket ship. And uh, most of the energy is going to come from the start, getting it off the ground. And when you're starting a wholesale business, make sure you're committed, make sure you're dedicated, make sure you're putting in the time at the right times of the day, the right times of the week, and you give it your all because to be successful with anything in life, don't let people tell you that wholesale or starting any type of business, eBay business RA is easy. Nothing's easy. Nothing, it takes hard work and persistence. And like Jonathan was saying, he felt like he was getting punched in the gut every single day. And I think that's part of being an entrepreneur and being successful. So love the insights. Um, if you guys are interested in starting wholesale. There's a bunch of free videos that I've been posting on my channel. Also, um, the course that Jonathan went through and uh, we've been mentioning is the wholesale formula, which is open for a week. It's actually closing the 21st and uh, it used to be open twice a year. Uh, it's actually only open up one time this year for one week from the 15th to the 21st. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link down below if you want to check it out. And I have a special little bonus as well. But Jonathan, I appreciate you. I'm also going to put Jonathan's guide as well, his transition guide from RA to wholesale, sharing his journey. I think it's like over 20 pages, really insightful. So uh, definitely check that out as well. But Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on, man. This was so much fun. And uh, believe it or not, man, it's crazy. Like I could guarantee you your words are probably going to change like a lot of people's lives. So thanks for coming on and thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this, like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Jonathan, appreciate you, brother. All right. Thanks, Steve.